basically we cut between two welds on the body right here and I went all the way across and when you pull that piece off with all the welds you'll see the pieces separate right and at that point I just cut only the outside because what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut slits and then we're gonna fold it up then you get it welded and then clean it up put some seam sealer on there and you'll be good All right guys, we got the driver's side done. So at this point, the car is gonna go to the welder tomorrow morning and he's gonna weld that up. And whatever excess metal there is, we're just gonna cut off and then we're gonna sand it smooth and then probably throw a bunch of seam sealer on there. All right, I guess this is the shop here. He just leave the car, drop the keys in the drop box, and he'll get to it before noon. Yeah, I guess we'll just leave it here, and hopefully no one steals my car or my wheels or my motor or anything. <laughs> Alright guys, car's back. So basically the welder put like a little lip right here where he welded the flaps underneath, and then he cut off all the excess. So you don't want to leave the exposed metal like this. We're gonna get it cleaned off with some wipes and alcohol and stuff. And then we're gonna take seam sealer and just apply it all the way across this stuff. And that'll keep it from getting moisture in and stuff. on the inside of the car so it's sealed inside and out all right guys here it is all dried now at this point yeah there's nothing that's gonna get through there as far as moisture and dirt so this is how you want it before you put the wide body on. All right, so here's how they look. Let's figure out how to get this antenna delete done. I think I just gotta unscrew this. Let's see what we've got here. We've got the Integra rear tow control arms. Rear upper control arms. Front upper control arms. Front lower control arms.
So height adjustment is really easy. If you want to raise it up, you're going to turn this bottom ring and you're going to turn it basically clockwise so that there's more threads showing and then you can lock it up, right? Then it's going to be raised. If you want to lower it, we're going to go as low as it'll go. We basically we want the threads to bottom out inside the shock. So you're going to turn the top one counterclockwise until the threads go as much in as they can. All right, so we've got it bottomed out. It won't turn anymore. So you're gonna turn all the ring all the way back down and tighten. All right, so next up on the list, got this Jordan Distributor Push Start Conversion Kit. Got some kill switches. And main relay plug. Apparently the harness on these older cars is trash, so you want to upgrade it with something like this. Oh, I see. So the kill switch, wow, they made it super easy. You literally just unplug this and hook up the kill switch wherever you want it. That's convenient. Okay. And then this is for the push start. Okay. All right, so got the little antenna button key and you can hide this wherever you want. So you're gonna tap the, they supply two of these little keychain keys and then the card. Any of them work to enable the key. You'll hear the beep. That's it. Shut it off, push the brake again. It. Now we just gotta put it all back together. It looks like a mess, but everything is actually really easy. We got four plugs going into the little ghost box unit. One of them goes to the harness of your car. It's only gonna plug into that specific spot. And if you watch your video, it's really easy to follow their directions. This orange one taps into your one of the brake wires. The front one's your antenna, of course. And then one of them's the push start button. So now we just have to clean up the wiring and tuck it all in.
got the antenna delete, all the suspension components are in, Bark Spell quick release, some bread floor mats, bread Vios 3. Of course underneath the dash we've got the Jordan distributors push to start button and kill switch and replacement main relay. Alright guys, so right here we have the anti-gravity batteries U1 or U1R battery that should fit in the DC2 Integra. Let's go ahead and weigh it real quick. So we're right at 7 pounds. So the problem we're going to have with this battery is that the posts are SAE and the car is JDM. So it uses JIS sizing and those are a lot more narrower. I got these little adapters here. Let's connect the little quick connect for my charger. Okay. And let's go ahead and plug in our SeaTech lithium charger. So yeah, we're just gonna let it do its thing and charge the battery up before we throw it in the car. Shout out to Morimoto for all these bulbs. Let's go ahead and swap the interior bulb. Right here we have the reverse light. For that we have the white LEDs. Got the brake light. For that we have red bulbs. And lastly the re the turn signals. We've got the amber. So I took these center caps off my 21A's to put on here and I kind of like it without caps. So the diffuser came with no hardware and no instructions. It did have two holes cut out here, one here and one here. I'm assuming that this one lines up with the hole here that the bumper has a pop clip that goes into. For these two holes, I'm guessing they're gonna bolt up to the frame here. So here's the plan. So I got these brackets. And the way I'm gonna connect it is I have two brackets hanging down here and then we're going to join it right here and we can adjust the height accordingly. I made this little template for my exhaust. I lined up the center of the rear with the center of the diffuser. Uh, basically measured off where it needs to go. So I've got it like that. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut 
and I'm assuming it's not gonna be perfect, so I'm gonna have to like do some trimming regardless once I finalize the fitment. Alright guys, here's where we're at with the diffuser. I honestly think it looks really good. So the way I've got this set up is I'm using multiple brackets. So the FK8 has the same brackets on the inside. You can't really see them. So I just need to add one more bracket in there. It's going to connect to that one. And it's going to give me some adjustability, right? I also need to put a bracket somewhere in the back of the diffuser. But check it out. Look at this hole I cut for the exhaust though. Holy crap. Dude, this is like the perfect cutout for this exhaust. That's it for now. This is how the car is going to sit until the panels come back from paint. I've got it lowered basically all the way max on the coilovers. I just wanted to start from there because I want the fitment to be like right on the wheel like the FK8. This video was a pretty long one but mainly because I was doing a lot of updating on stuff like all the bulbs, the push to start, kill switch. I haven't 100% figured out how I'm going to put the diffuser on, but I've got it to where I need it to be. And I can't really figure out exactly how it's going to go on until I get the rear bumper back. I did also ceramic coat the TE37Vs. Hopefully we get this wide body on in the next week or so. I'm excited to see how it's going to come together. Still waiting on the SS Craft rear wing and the Jay's Racing hood. So make sure to like and subscribe and turn on notifications.